In this video, we're going to go over some body handling exercises. Now, it's really important that you condition your puppy to enjoy being handled. Um, a lot of people, well, I have to trim my dog's nails, and they grab the dogs and they hold and they pin. And we're big believers in dog consent. We always want your dog to want to do the activity. And as your puppy gets older, they're going to have more strength and the ability to bite you if you're doing those sort of things. And if your puppy is biting you, you're doing it wrong. I'm holding treats here. That's why he's biting me. Um, so uh, when you're doing this sort of thing, it's really important to do this as a puppy when they have weak jaws. Even though those puppy teeth are sharp, the, they are sharp to compensate for not having the strength in their jaws. If you don't do this now, you will very much regret it later. This is going to really help to make sure that your puppy doesn't have problems when it goes to the vet. Uh, for groomers, um, as well as uh, if you're trimming their nails and things along those lines. Now, what I want to do is I want to, uh, it's very natural for puppies to explore things with their mouth. And so let me see if I can do this real quick without a treat. So if I reach, he's now he's just touching, which is good. We have already done some body handling exercises with him, but a lot of your puppies are going to just grab and mouth at your hand as soon as you reach for them. So what we want to do is we want to create a positive association and we're going to condition the puppy not to jump and lunge for the treat just sit there passively and then have the touch associated with something positive so i'm going to pair i have treats in this hand and this hand so i'm going to i'm going to with a flat hand with one treat in it let's get him to sit i'm going to reach underneath and, and then i'm touching at the side i pull back and we're underneath and i'm touching on top of his head and you want to work on different sides and so the first couple times i'm pairing them so I'm, he's really more focused on the treat than the touch, but they're coming at the same time. So this is only the first couple times that you do it. Unless you have a fearful puppy, then you might need to back up to that stage and never be afraid to back up if you need to. This is, again, the goal is your puppy is comfortable being touched and handled, not that you can do it quickly. All right, so once I can do that, then I want to start changing it up. So I want to touch and then treat. And that's an important transition. So we want the, the dog to identify touching means I'm about to get a treat. So I'm just going to sit here patiently and wait. And if you notice, I'm touching on different sides. Now, right there, it was really subtle, but Ollie lowered his head a little bit. So that might be an indication that I might go back to a pairing and just keep on doing that until Ollie's very comfortable. Now, reaching over a dog's head, most dogs don't like it. So it's probably a good activity for you to practice. But in general, if you ever reach over a dog's head and it lowers its head, it's saying, I don't really like it. So it's better to, I like to pet dogs kind of in an oval area, right? Well, anywhere in this oval area, uh, under the chin, on the shoulders, or on the chest. Those are really nice. Okay, so now I'm gonna touch and then he gets a treat. And I'm gonna work my way from the snout all the way down to his tail. So I'm gonna to touch on the side now, treat. Now he's still chewing the treats. I probably wait until the treat is done before you do your next one. And if your puppy is chewing a longer than three bites, you probably cut, need to cut those treats in half. So again, I'm gonna to touch on the side. He's comfortable, he's not going over my hand, and then he gets a treat after that. Next one is I'm gonna do the ears. So I'm gonna to touch the ear, and then he gets a treat. And I'm gonna tear these in half, buddy, because you're taking too long to chew them. So then I'm gonna to touch the other ear, cheat, uh, and treat. Now you saw he ducked his head again, so try not to do that with uh, reaching over. So, I, so I'll touch, and then he gets the treat. The next stage is we wanna actually grasp the ear. So I'm gonna grasp it, and then he gets a treat. And we'll do that with the other side too. Grasp the ear, treat, a little bit of a pull away, but I think he's okay. Uh, next stage, I'm gonna actually lift it up and then give him a treat. And if he starts to pull away like he did there, then back up and do it very short. So pull up and then give him a treat right away. Eventually you wanna to get to the point where you can hold that uh, ear up for about five seconds and then for both ears and he's not trying to move away. There we go. Okay, uh, so once you've done uh, the uh, ears, the next stage is I'm gonna do the shoulders, treat, I'm going to do uh, the chest, and I'm moving very quickly in this video. For you, you might have to go a little bit slower, and you should go slower. This is actually a great exercise to do when you're feeding your puppy, because you can also those pieces of kibble is a wonderful way to reinforce. Now, the, now the next one is, is pretty difficult for a lot of puppies, and that's a great position, Ollie, thank you, is touching their tootsies, their paws. So touch, and then treat. And if you reach to touch your puppy's uh, uh, paw and it pulls it back, then reach halfway, and give a treat like that. Always back up a step like I talked about earlier. Eventually you can go three quarters of the way, treat, then touch, then treat. Let's get you all those pieces. Then I want to actually hold the paw. See if I can go like this. There we go, Ollie. And so I'm just kind of lightly keeping it in my palm. And then eventually I want to get to the point where I can ask, actually lightly keep my paw and grasp it for a second. I grasp it a little bit longer. 
I should have waited for him to get done chewing the treats for that. So he's done chewing the treats. I grasp, hold a little bit. And there's no pressure. You're not trying to pinch or anything. You just want to get him used to you holding the, the paw. Let's get you to down. Do I have to lure you with the treat? There we go. I'll reward that. So the next stage is you want to actually uh, hold the digit. Now right there you saw he pulled back and that's again that consent that we talked about. So if that's the case, I might go ahead and go like this and invite him to, and I'm holding his paw and I'm going back to the pairing. And again, don't be afraid to go back to the pairing. If you do it a lot at first, eventually you'll never have to do the pairing and you can just hold their paws and they're like, give me a mani petty. Sit. Now I'm holding his dew claw, which is too long. Make sure you pu cut your puppy's nails. You be cu should be cutting them once a week or getting using a Dremel. If they get too long, the quick will uh, will grow out, and then uh, it's, and then you can't really cut into it without causing a lot of pain to your puppy. So it's really important to stay proactive in terms of doing that. I would do this for all the puppy's uh, front paws. I would also do it for their dew claw if they have the dew claw off to the side. And make sure you cut. Uh, you're like I said, cutting them so they don't. Uh, uh, grow, uh, they'll become ingrown if you do it. Now, the next thing is I want to do is I want to see if I can lure Ali, even though this is a little bit odd positioning. Sit. <laughs> it's so hard to sit. There we go. Now, I'm going to see if I can get him to go down. What I want him to be is I want him to be perpendicular to me. So when I do the, the back pause, let's get you down. Come on, buddy, you can do it. I know this is a little bit awkward position. When you're doing this, I would probably do it on, make sure you're doing it on a floor or carpet or whatever, something that the dog is comfortable with. There we go. So now I'm gonna go ahead and pair. Again, the paws are difficult, uh, or problematic, I should say. A lot of dogs just don't like having their paws uh, touched because a lot of times, the only time we touch them is when we're actually stepping on them accidentally. So now again, pairing. And eventually you get to the point where you can make that transition in the same way. So you grab the paw and then he gets a treat. And if he starts to get up like that, that's an indication I'm uncomfortable. So let's go get you down. So then I would reach halfway and then get him a treat and then eventually reach all the way and you're touching and you're going to do all the individual digits on the back paw as well. Last thing you want to do is the tail um, and be gentle with the tail. Don't crank on it, but lift it up. Look at the anus a little bit. Uh, and that's something your vet is going to do. So again, you want your puppy just very completely relaxed and comfortable when they're doing this. Now that's the first day, uh, first way of doing it which is pairing it with treats. There is an alternative way of doing it, and I'm going to have Laura help me out by handing me uh, some other tools that we're going to use to occupy Ollie. So the first thing we're going to use is a, snuff, uh, is a lick mat. Now, a lick mat is basically uh, 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 usually silicon, and they have all these little uh, crevices in. So what I can do is I can put this down, and I'm going to wait for Ollie to get into it. You see Ollie's really enjoying this peanut butter. So now I can reach down, and I can grab his ear, and he's pretty comfortable with it. Now, right there, a little bit of consent. He was saying, I'm not for, super comfortable. So again, I touch, and that was a little bit much. I'm reaching over him, so try not to reach over. Touch the paw. And if he goes like that, you might just touch him here and get him relaxed, covering, uh, touching him kind of uh, a little bit more closer to his tail, and then gradually work your way all the way up to his mouth. And eventually, I can reach, the, and I can also do it in kind of a caressing motion. So I'm going down to his paw. Again, he's saying, I don't, don't mess with me. I'm, I'm messing around with this. I'm eating the, uh, I'm licking the, uh, the lick mat. So these are all examples of fails, uh, things the dog's saying, I'm not comfortable with this. So I might just simply keep my hand here. And you see now at this point, he's not moving away. So it might take several steps and that's okay. Remember, the goal of this is for you to be able to reach and touch your puppy and uh, the ears, the mouth, the toes, the tail. Uh, and I, one last thing I didn't go over, but you also would want to do it with lifting up his licks, lips so that you can look at his uh, teeth. You don't want to do that, obviously, when he's doing a lick mat, but a lick mat is a nice option because you see he's very comfortable. And if he's just, uh, if touching him is too much, you might just kind of go into petting him and just getting him used to being petted while he's having this pleasurable experience of getting all this peanut butter. Now, another thing you can do is you can use something like this. Let's see if we can redirect him. So now he's chewing this. I can do the same thing, go back to it. And, and, and I wouldn't do these together. I'm doing these for demonstration purposes. Uh, but again, same sort of thing. If he starts moving away, he's saying I'm uncomfortable. So then just go back to an easier version of it, reaching or just touching or touching and then doing the caressing. Now, some dogs might actually need eye drops. So you might actually also get them used to their eyes. So that'd be a good one to use maybe for a bully stick. Uh, and so I could redirect his head up. And again, I would kind of just get into caressing the back of his head, get closer to the eye, eventually lift it up a little bit while he's going for it. And at any point he moves away or stops engaging with the lick mat or the bully stick, he's saying I'm uncomfortable. So back up to an easier step. 
Again, this is something I would highly, highly, highly recommend that you practice often. I would probably practice this. Your puppy should be fed four times a day when they're this size. I would practice at least one of those meals with this handling exercise. And then once a day, I would also use a, either a bully stick or a uh, lick mat. And just to get a point where when you're doing it, your buddy, your little buddy is like, I don't care. I have been conditioned that touching and petting me is a nice, relaxing thing. There's nothing negative about it. I'm comfortable about it. So now when I go to the scary vet's office or the groomer, or you want to check out my teeth, no big deal. Okay, this is my buddy Ollie and Ollie enjoying a lick mat. And this is a video on body handling and the importance of doing it as a puppy. Quest, you are a goofball.